So what you need to do is um, take photographs. The purpose of the exhibition is to recognize, examine, and understand that we are in a particular moment in photography's history where contemporary documentary photographic work references diverse genres and it involves a broad range of image making processes. Extremely varied and provocative documentary photography has been practiced by many contemporary artists. They are inviting us to contemplate forms of visual experience beyond the framework of a single truth, beyond the static definition of documentary photography. One might say if modernism was all about objective, universal, and events-oriented documentary, then postmodernism could be about subjective, personalized, and situational, aestheticized documentary. Historically, documentary photographers were expected to produce truth, which was enough to provide the narrative. The pictures were expected to speak for themselves. But in postmodern theory, it is allowable for a more subjective input from the photographers to provide the narrative and context. As photography enters into 21st century, the advent of digital technology completely changed the philosophy of construction of documentary photography. The thing for me is that postmodernism does not limit a photographer to a set of rules that cannot be broken, but it allows freedom to explore in any way possible. Pictorialism, modernism, and postmodernism are all but labels that accompany political, cultural, and social change. They help define trends within periods, but should not create barriers to artistic experimentation. But is there a place for experimentation in documentary? Of course, why not? So to look further at Current documentary photographers who are regarded as postmodern in their practice, we have gathered nine artists whose research and artistic practices focus on diverse current trends in documentary photography and provide a backdrop for discussion on what it means to be documenting in this contemporaneous digital age. So the artists presenting in this show represent documentary photography as it relates to its destruction and resurrection from analog and digital loss and gain of the conventional definition of documentary photography and documentary photography provoking and inviting the ongoing transformation of the definition. I'm a photographer and I teach at the University of Missouri, Columbia. These are three works from a series I recently completed called The Playing Field, looking at um, interior casino architecture in Reno, Nevada. And to some extent I wanted the pictures to kind of reference, to the extent that they could, the consistent interiority of this kind of architecture. And so I've tended to preserve their, their darkened, labyrinthine qualities that can be found in the casino, but um, sort of inserted a fantastical element. So the, the, view, the vantage points are very uh, specifically chosen to create this sort of nebulous place, particularly in this one, a nebulous place where one might stand. And so it's been, you know, it's been a, it's been a blast getting to know everybody here. And uh, the event's been great. The show looks great, and there's going to be um, versions of the show in two locations, um, one in South Korea and one in uh, Singapore. So between the symposium, this show, and those shows, it's been a fantastic opportunity uh, to be involved. Yeah. The images you'll see here on the wall are from a series titled Breaking the Girl. The series follows my niece Hannah's trajectory and experience with severe scoliosis. Um, we collaborate, the two of us. I also suffer from scoliosis, but not nearly to the degree that Hannah has suffered. And so we bonded very deeply over this experience and um, the fact that this is all occurring during 
this adolescent period where you have all this apprehension about your body. So this investigates the way you feel about your body as a woman, the way um, you don't have control in many ways over what happens when you suffer from a disease, and the support that you find from family, friends, doctors. So um, in these images, we can see Hannah having her brace um, created. We see her being confined. Um, and uh, eventually we see her going through the surgery. And so it's been really great to be part of the symposium and see all the different approaches to postmodern documentary photography. Uh, and I'm really pleased to be a part of it. Oh my God. The work that I'm presenting here at the exhibition is actually um, a project that I started about two years ago um, around a spiritualist center um, based in Indiana. And spiritualism is a non-denominational religion with the belief in communicating with the spirit world or the afterlife. So I've been visiting the center for about two years and this particular work that's presented in the exhibition was inspired by that project. Um, specifically in this photograph, I allowed a sunflower, which is a symbol of spiritualism, to degrade on a piece of large format film for about a week. And then I um, just processed it like a regular negative and printed it without any kind of um, manipulation, so a regular uh, photographic workflow. So essentially, the image is a kind of um, cameraless document of a sunflower. Um, so being at this symposium has been really great because usually when I go to conferences, um, I'm in a space with a lot of people from um, other disciplines, uh, which is really awesome, but uh, I really enjoy being in a space specifically for photographers. Um, it's a chance to talk about our practice, it's a chance to talk about our medium, and it's also a chance to learn about how other people deal with um, some of the questions and considerations and some of the, um, you know, I guess problems or issues that we all deal with as photographers and be able to have conversations with each other to problem solve and also just um, act as kind of a seed to germinating new ideas. Jasmine, I just adore the kind of snapshot quality of her work. And um, she really um, captures these women's expressions in a really interesting way. To her, these women kind of question the ideal of living your life as a woman and wanting certain things in life, but having the reality of what your lived life might be. And each one of them, again, I am so interested in, um, in talking to her, which I didn't get a chance to, about whether or not there, there was more collaboration with the subject or not. Because I think that's a really interesting um, thing that's happening in these images. These are my new pieces of work called the Mannies, and they're, they're mannequins um, printed on fine art paper that already has a metallic finish on it, um, which sort of makes me feel like I'm looking through clothing at naked bodies, which is a little voyeuristic, a lot voyeuristic, and, uh, and it just kind of discusses a little bit of the history of women and how women have been viewed in the past and how they're represented, even in mannequins, as a perfect figure. And I'm just here to say how grateful I am for the symposium and how excited I am about the exhibition and to be able to share new work with people and really just the whole idea of postmodern documentary photography and work like this fitting in a documentary show is is also kind of exciting for me too, so thanks. The thing is fabulous. <laughs> the thing is fabulous. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Nate Larson, representing Nate Larson and Marnie Schindelman uh, here. My collaborative partner is not able to be here, unfortunately. But uh, we've been working on this project for about five years, where we look at tweets and the locations that get attached to tweets, and then make photographs on those sites, so sort of retracing people's movements uh, in virtual space, but then repeated in physical space. So 
the pieces that are on the wall here, uh, one is in Oswego, New York, one is in College Park, Maryland, and then this one is in uh, Brooklyn, New York. So I tried to choose an array of geographies here as a, as a sort of sample uh, for that. And it's been really great being part of this, uh, this symposium. Uh, it's an interesting topic to think about how documentary has expanded. And I think it's uh, really pressing in this moment in time, thinking about new technologies and new ways of, uh, of making art. So it's been really fantastic uh, listening to all the other artists at the symposium and just being a part of it. So. Yeah. Eat some food, look at some art, talk to each other. <laughs> Uh, the work that you're seeing uh, is titled Zumarella. Zumarella is a caricature about a woman who have it all. The work deals with the status of an empowered woman in the rapidly globalized world. It depicts the mores of the contemporary women who are battling to be super duper in every way. The challenges uh, facing these women are super heroic in proportion, whether they are self-imposed or imposed from the outside, even though the women these days are highly empowered. So this work um, examines this, uh, this tragic, comic, and impossible situation that women have to deal with, and isolation stemming from the conceitedness of uh, feeling different and better than anybody else. The figure of the third person in this so photo uh, that is created by an amalgamation of a two model together are uh, representing the agony of contemporary women unable to escape from the self-made predicaments and social mores in the land of entitlement. She also um, is from Korea, um, like men, um, and she's been a transplant outside of her country for about 20 years. And when she was home visiting, realized that she was seeing signs for um, women who were offering themselves as brides from Vietnam to come over and live in South Korea where conditions were better. So being a transplant herself, she was really interested in trying to connect with these women about what that experience meant to them and actually really struggled. It was kind of stigmatized if those women uh, were to talk to her but eventually was able to um, connect with some as well. The reason I love this is just it's such a surreal and beautiful panorama as well. And oftentimes in her works, um, you don't necessarily get that con direct confrontation with the viewer. So you're really still having to kind of question um, what that means as these women and kind of explore their new lives. There was a few themes that I really saw throughout the show, and one of them was the idea of place, and especially in this work by Lee Dong Joon, there is his particular tie for the last um, decade and a half, I believe, to India, where he goes there again and again. And, you know, there's really um, just an interesting and somewhat abstract quality. Each one of these has its own narrative, um, which I think you just can't stop kind of guessing what is happening in the images and trying to understand it better. So this is just <laughs> Billy Mandel was raised um, Catholic and looked at this as a really interesting space. The idea of the confessional is a really interesting space. The idea of being uh, repentant and asking for forgiveness is very common in most religions. But not every religion actually creates a physical space for that, and that's what's so interesting about it and what attracted her to these. To me, especially these two images over here, I, what I love is just the absolute abstraction of it and the idea that actually repentance and those ideas are, are kind of abstract in themselves. Like, when do you know you've actually achieved that? But I also think the work really invites the viewer in to contemplate their own, what they would be doing in those spaces and what they mean. The other thing that's so beautiful about the work is really the imperfection of those spaces. I think of the idea of being in that space and almost that it should be cherished that you're that you're going in to confess but you see these 
uh, different elements of the use and how they're kind of abused over this long period of time of people going in and out and using the space. Yeah.